Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here. Can I show you something really cool about ZBrush 4 R7? It's a total trick. How do you do something crazy like this piece, this, this foam, really? Let's go down and select that foam. And I'm just going to go into solo mode and hide all that. Now, I didn't keep my undos, but I'm going to show you kind of how I accomplished this. Let's put on wireframe. How in God's good name do you create something as crazy as that with all of these like openings, right? Like this hasn't been processed, so it still has a bunch of uh, holes that need to be closed. But this is just an amazing form. And it was a total accident for me to create this. It was an absolute total accident. It came about from geometry like this, actually. This was all part, let's go into solo mode, or out of solo mode. I had all this extra geometry down here at the bottom which I had done through array mesh. So if we look at this, this is just like a bunch of random geometry hanging out in there. If I turn array mesh off, you can see it was just some parts of the guy, some little polygons that I extruded out with nano mesh from the duck, and then I swirled them around a little bit, things like that. And then I went in with array mesh. And with array mesh, I did a lot of stuff. I adjusted the rotation in X and Y here. And then I not only adjusted the rotation, I actually adjusted the curve so that it would do different things. So let's see, can we walk through any of that? Did I do any scale? Like scale is done as well. Offset is done a little bit as well. There's a lot of things that kind of happened. Um, so let's take this repeat down. Let's take it. So it's at 1, which essentially turns array mesh off. Right? We're going to turn array 2 on. And you can see, boom, boom. So the next piece, normally it's this way, the next piece starts going this way. And that's coming from this rotation that we're doing here. Where are we rotating it? How is it happening? How is all of this stuff? In fact, actually, a lot of it's done with transpose. Coming in here and say rotating it, and let's just say adjust. Let's just say, can we move this stuff around? Let's repeat it a little bit. There. That's going to be a little better. And then we can move this stuff around. Look at that. Just got an explosion in there. Right? And let's just leave it with, uh, let's go 5, let's go 9. And uh, we're going to uh, scale some parts of it. Let's scale it inward so it's this kind of crazy shape that's imploding on itself with all of these things kind of pulling out to the side. And here's the trick. So we're going to make this a mesh. We're going to make this a mesh so that there's no array mesh to it and it's actual geometry. And then watch what happens when I do this one thing. Here's the trick, okay? A lot of lead up to this one tiny little trick. You go to DynaMesh, you set your resolution to 32, and you DynaMesh it. Boom! What? Crazy awesome geometry. That's polygrouped and not something you're ever going to polygon model with Z modeler ever, you know, in this way, this organic. And it's with a little tiny trick of using DynaMesh. Let me show you just one more example of us using this. Let's take a, let's turn that mesh off, right? So you can see that's how this was created, right? You can see the parallels between this form and the form that really represents the water. But there's some other parts to this. Like, let's come in and see if we can find some crazy, yeah. So make sure you check out my first video on generative art and how we go through this process. I'll tell you a little bit about the process now. Remember, there's a selection process. There's an action process. There's a retention process. What do you retain? Because this isn't all the polygons. And then there's the loop, rinse and repeat. Right? So this is one of these parts that were created out of that. And then if I just, if all I do is I come in here, I go to DynaMesh, I set this down to 32, I DynaMesh this thing. You can get some really amazing algorithmic artwork out of it. Divide this. There you go. And now you've got a new form that just hasn't existed before. We can come in and inflate this a little bit see if that can kind of do some some work and we can polish that a little bit you know I don't know I like it better the way it was like that that's kind of beautiful 
but all of it with this neat little trick. The one reason I wanted to put this video together for you. So let's just end this here, get back into ZBrush, have some fun, share this DynaMesh tip. If somebody has nano meshed an object and it's crazy like you saw in my first video, share this tip. Let me know on Facebook how, how it works for you. Share, I would love to see the artwork that you do, the crazy algorithmic stuff that we're gonna start to invent together. All the best. Good luck with your sculpting.